Washington, here you go. There are very few players who come into the league fast and leave the league fast. Even less who enter and leave with Olympian speed. And then there's Daryl Green. Do you think that Joe Gibbs and Bobby Beathard weren't nervous at the 1983 draft with the last first round pick because they were the Super Bowl champs, hoping Green would still be there? He was, and then he was there at cornerback for the Washington Redskins for 20 straight years, which is a record. His son, Jared, his presenter, got to share a lot of this because dad played cornerback in the National Football League at 42 years old. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, to present Daryl Green for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, please welcome Jared Green. My father always encouraged me to, uh, you gotta excuse me, I lost my voice last night. If anybody was there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, my father always encouraged me to be the best at whatever I do. That's the green way. But he also humbled me by saying, you're never there. Well today, Dad, you're there. But, hold on, hold on. Don't get comfortable. See, because when you played, you were about a buck 73. <laughs> and that jacket that they gave you last night, you better fit it next year. <laughs> On top of that, you guys might not know, but um, my father is the uh, next poster child for the 40 and Up Club. They need someone too. So if anyone wants to talk business, come to me, because I got a patent last month. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the most common question I've heard this week about my dad would probably be, um, who would have thought? But in this case, it depends on who's asking the question. See, when I went to the Super Bowl in Arizona with my family, I knew what was going to pass. Because my father's been a Hall of Famer for years now. See, the definition of a true Hall of Famer is someone who is great at everything. My dad was a great football player, yeah, yeah. But he's an even better man, son, brother, father, friend, businessman, and most importantly, man of God. If you're out there thinking to yourself, how did he do it? No one thing. It was all the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's no cliche about that. Before I get on with this, I want to acknowledge uh, my family, who I represent to the fullest up here, who also make up about 95% of the crowd. But on a serious note, yesterday my father and I tried to think of some current NFL players that could possibly become Hall of Famers. I think we thought of two. So, to my generation, our elders and our parents can set good examples such as my father's, but they can't live it for us. It's up to us to stop the violence, sex abuse, drug abuse, alcoholism, and the many more things that are plaguing our generation. And in the same way my father was great, let's live lives that our kids will be willing to come up on stage one day in honor. Before I introduce my dad, I just want to let you guys in on a little story. I've been holding his cell phone this past week. Um, you know, he's been busy and all that. Um, 
last night got a text message from a Green Bay number. And it said, hey, Daryl, one more time. I clicked delete. No. <laughs> now, everyone, I'd like to present to you the greatest man to ever do it, my best friend, Daryl Green. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Deacon Jones, Deacon Jones said I, was, I would cry. You bet your life I'ma cry. You bet your life I'ma cry. You bet your life I will. That's my boy. That's my boy right there. It ain't this and that, it's that. Thank God. What a great day. What a great day. I want to thank the committee, the selection committee, that the ones who put me up here. There's some men and women that watched my career over those 20 seasons and said, he should be here. And he should be here now. Thank you, guys and ladies. The Pro Football Hall of Fame. This city, this organization, thank you for hosting me and my family and friends. Jared, you are the man. I tell you. If you... I've seen... I haven't seen like everybody. But I've seen a lot in the world and material and so forth. But I got a clear, clear vantage point. Clear, clear, crystal clear vantage point of what things are really important. It's Jesus Christ, it's people, it's family, it's your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters. That's what makes me excited today. There's a lot of people who've traveled this with me. It's been a long time. Most special of them all. It's my parents. Both of my parents are deceased. They're the most special of them all. Because I'm not here. I'm not here. If they wasn't here first. My dad. My dad, Leonard Green. Leonard Green Sr. Everybody said, you're too little, you can't do it. He said, boy, you can run that ball. They said no. He said go. The best encouragement you can ever get in life is when a dad encourages his son. Encourage your son. That's what he did for us. I sure like to have a drum roll right now because I'm going to talk about the greatest mother in the world.
am I going to cry? You got to be kidding me. You don't know my mom and daddy. Gloria Green, baby. Gloria Green. She told me a story one day. I was about 10 years old. She said, you know, the day you were born, I was in the room there, and they had me up on these things, and nothing was happening. You weren't doing anything, and everybody left out of the room maybe 20, 30 minutes. And all of a sudden, she heard a scream. Somebody said, catch that baby. She said, you're about to hit the ground. When I got into football, she said, don't let them big boys hurt you now. Remember the first day you were born. My parents were the best. My parents were the best. They were the best. I thank the Lord for them. Even though my parents are gone, I thank the Lord that I can celebrate my accomplishments with the people that they left behind. Starting with the best, the best seven siblings in the world. That's what I'm talking about. My two sisters, Linda Flanagan, Deborah Baran Green, my oldest brother, Leonard Jr., my brother Lester, the real athlete, one who taught me the ropes, my two younger brothers, Reggie and Elwood. And you ask me again, am I gonna cry? I even have 12 brothers and sister-in-laws. Kathy, Katrina, Dana, Yolanda, that's on the green side of the aisle. My brother-in-law, Elmo. My brother-in-law, Rick. And Lynn, his wife, Robin, Rudy, Greg, Cheryl, Cheryl on the finish side, my wife's side. Tons of nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles. Also, I can further honor my mother as I acknowledge her three sisters. Fred, you talked about your dad. I have an aunt here. If I'm correct, I think she's 88. My aunt Odessa. She's representing my mom. Love you. Happy birthday. <clears throat> my aunt Marie Lucas. She's here representing my mom and supporting me. And my aunt Edith Howard. Love you and thank you so much for coming to be with me. My Uncle John is here as well. Thank all of you today. From the Redskins, 20 years, she was like a mother. Her name is Miss Barbara Fry, just like a mother to me. From the capital city, my Nana, Miss Bernadine Lacey. No one can ever take the place of my mom, though. But this lady, for 23 years, she, she tried and she's coming close. It's my mother-in-law, Ms. Frances Finner. Thank you, I love you. And out of this same group, I'll add to that group, a man who treated me like a son, a Hall of Famer, Mr. Bobby Mitchell. Thank you, Bobby. And my late father-in-law, Mr. Rudy Finner Sr. They all had me covered. I love you all so much. Boy, I could use another drum roll right here because I want to introduce the first family, the greatest family in the world. Starting with my son, you guys obviously have seen him, Jared. They're probably sick of me telling them how much I love you, man. I love you, buddy. My oldest daughter, Crystal, is here with us today. My middle girl, Jarrell. My baby girl, Joy. Joy Elizabeth, they're here today with me. Okay. And then, there is the queen, my lovely wife, over 23 faithful, faithful years.
is Joel Green. Love you, baby. My biggest supporter, a true Hall of Fame wife. I love you. Just a quick, doing this process of trying to acknowledge friends, quick shout out to the Jess X. Jones Falcon High School and community, to young people in that community. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. To my college football alma mater, Texas A&I, the Javelinas of Kingsville, Texas, my teammates. You guys can stand up with your blue on. It's a Redskins day, baby. To the people of Kingsville, Texas. And also to my friends down at St. Paul's College where I finished up my academic degree. Thank you. A lot of teammates and a lot of years, over 20 years of football. I have a few guys here, I like to try to acknowledge a few, can't do them all, but I had three roommates in those 20 years and I didn't like any of them. <laughs> but my friend Vernon B.D. Dean was one. Scott Shot Rock Turner. And my man, a brother from another mother, Tim, I won't call him Big Cuz anymore because he's a Pastor Johnson at Orlando World Outreach Center. So you guys are good teammates and good roommates. There are other guys here, my buddy Johnny Thomas, Martin Mayhew who's not here with us today, but Ken Coffey, Curtis Jordan, Ricky Sanders, Gary Clark, Virgil Say, Rick Doc Walker, Mark Mosley, Jim Lachey, Ray Brown, Charles Mann, Ken Harvey, Kennard Lane. And a very special recognition for the late, just this year, Kevin Mitchell and Sean Taylor, two young men. That's right. The Redskin Nation stick together. Okay, I gotta get through this. Other special friends from the Redskins from years back, Mr. John Cook and Coach Larry Peckatell on the defense and Torgy Torgerson, GM Charlie Cashley, Bubba Tyre, BJ Blanchard, my sister, Dan Raleigh, Jay Bird, Al Bellamy, John Jenkins, and Lego. They used to take care of the football field. That's how I could play 20 years. Those guys took care of the field. We didn't have the synthetic stuff. Thank these guys. And also the late Nate Fine and Joe Cuzo, just to name a few. But they were the best. I finished up my last seasons, probably three or four seasons, under the great leadership, and I thank him today, of Dan and Tanya Snyder. And any of you all, as they used to say in my church, if you know prayer, pray for Tanya Snyder. She's been under the weather, if you would. Just pray for her. She's a dear friend. Arlette Snyder, Dan's mom, and Michelle. My good buddy, the late Jerry Snyder. I consider my personal friend. Dwight Shaw and the rest of the management team who've supported us for so many years as well. Thank you so much for being here with me. To the most football knowledgeable, faithful, most caring folks in the world, the Redskins faithful, our fans. We share this day with all of you, here and all over the world, back home and everywhere else. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, I'd like to move on real quick. Now, over the last six months, I've been trying, I've been living in a constant state of what I call introspective meditation. Basically trying to discover my story, and it's been hard. In doing so, I found that there are so many stories within my story. 
And so I guess they can start the clock now. I'm going to try to finish this up. I've already mentioned to you an incredible story my mom told me about the day I was born and just the mercy and grace of someone seeing me. This is 1960. You can imagine what it was like then. And so I'm grateful for that. And there's another story, unique story. I met in 1971, I think I was sixth grade. I met two guys. One was Cornell Green and one was Clem Greenwood. These guys, over time, became my closest friends throughout my entire childhood, my, my school age years. We went over to Attucks Junior High School in the seventh grade. We decided, Clem and I, we were gonna play football. Well, we decided we would go and play for Bastion Elementary School, the school we just graduated from. We decided we would make the, the mile run home each day because it would be better for us to play with kids more our size as opposed to kids our age. And so we did it. Coach Jefferson and Coach Smith, they welcomed us and gave us an incredible opportunity. After we finished up that season, we were eighth graders and those addicts had eighth grade football. Clem and I decided, you know what, uh, we probably ought to just skip it. We're not going to play anymore. And so we went on through life, and in 11th grade, I went over to Jones High School. And I met Coach John Smith and Coach Bear, Coach Rogers, Roland Rogers. In 11th grade, Clem didn't come, and I said, Coach, I like to play football. And he looked at me, obviously, about five foot nothing and a hundred and no pounds. But they put me on the junior varsity and I played, I did well. And the next year, Coach James Bo Humphrey, he's here with us today. He invited me to play and start at the cornerback position. About 145 pounds on my senior team as a varsity player. And at that point I realized I was on my way, baby. I'm on my way. Hey coach, I'll see you back there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Coach, I'm going to tell on you. They say you told me this was your first time ever flying in your life and you're 79 years old. Y'all think the Hall of Fame is not important? Give him a hand. <clears throat> but I was on my way at that time. And I need to figure out how I could take this thing to the college level. An opportunity came again in the form of Coach Fred Jonas. He came and met up with Coach Humphreys and Coach Humphreys said, well, I got a little kid you might want to look at. Came over there and talked to me and said, well, look here, son, I think I'll give you an opportunity. I don't have a scholarship for you, but we can get a grant. I said, Coach, let me check my options first. I'll take it. <laughs> so I went with him. And when I went to school, Cornell went with me too. He wasn't a football player, but he went as well. And I was homesick from day one. Matter of fact, Coach, you got my $20 my mama gave me. I want it back. She gave me $20 to ride the trailways home. And I attempted on, on several cases occasions to escape, and he took my money. But one day, Cornell said, man, I got some guys, we're going home. Met a guy from another school, he drives a car. And somehow, while wires got mixed up, they left me, and I cried the whole weekend. And Monday morning, they were talking about this car wreck. And it was Cornell now. And he didn't make it. He didn't make it. And I didn't make that ride either. I went home after that last game, coach, remember? I went home. I couldn't take it. I was homesick. I lost my friend. I went home and got a job, went to night school. I grew up a little bit, and I came back to A&I a year and a half later. 
Fred was gone. We had a new coach, Coach Ron Harms, and he welcomed me in real quickly. Started me right off the bat. A new opportunity came to me again in just those short three years. Now I'm about 165, 170, depending on who's saying it. An opportunity came knocking again. A man by the name of Bobby Bethard. <clears throat> so they drafted me. They drafted me, put me in the draft, and I'm going to the Redskins. And two weeks before I get ready to go, I'm at home. I'm pulling up on a Sunday morning to my mom's house after church. And this young girl from the community runs up to my car, and she's screaming, and she's hollering. And she said, Clem took his own life. And so I came to Washington, D.C. Both of my buddies were gone, my sixth grade best buddies. It was tough. But when I went back to a and I met a family. They were the Melendez family and a good friend named Doug Taft. And they told me about a man named Jesus. Jesus saved my soul. He gave me a different perspective on life. He showed me that I can be a man and I can walk right, the things my son talked about. I can have integrity, I can be honest, I can be faithful, I can be true. And so I brought that, what my parents had taught me and what Jesus had said, and I put that to work in my NFL career. And God told me not to leave Washington, D.C. That's how I was there for 20 years. I was doing the free agency time. Yes, I was a part of that. I was a part of the free agency. But God had a plan for me. I stayed the course. But not only did I stay the course on the field, I stayed the course faithfully to this woman for almost 24 years. Faithfully to my community. Faithfully to my pastor, Pastor Brett Fuller, in the Grace Covenant Church in Chantilly, Virginia. Faithful to my community through my sinners, and other works, faithful to the people. And so, I stand here today and I'll say to you something that is somewhat unique, but before I do, I wanna just say as well as I acknowledge Bobby Beth that turned me over to Joe Gibbs. And he turned me over to Richie Pettibone. And he turned me over to my Hall of Fame buddy, Coach Jimmy Thomas. And later on, Coach Tom Hayes. And a real shout out to my good friend who helped me even from the offense, Terry Robisky. And I continue to move forward. Continue to stand strong. But these are the men and women, the people who've given me the opportunities to stand up here. They've given me the support to stand up here. And so as I prepare to close, folks, there's two things <clears throat> that I know. Number one, no matter how gifted you are or how hard you work, if there's no one willing to give you an opportunity, it doesn't mean a thing. And secondly, I believe that this day is a part of the continuation of God's sovereign purpose and righteous destiny for my life. And that being knowing Jesus, loving him, and making him known. I did that even as a professional football player everywhere I went. And that was done through the visibility the influence, the access, all that God gives us, the Lord gives us while we play a childhood game. Can I tell you today, at the expense of sounding real self-righteous, I belong here. I belong here. I belong here. I belong here because I know what to do with it.
I know what to do with God's fame, with God's dollars, with God's visibility, God's influence in relationships. I know what to do with it. To Jesus be the glory. Thank you. Bless you.